Welcome back to another instalment of New Zealand's Bird of the Week, where in this video I will be talking about the black-billed gull. Birds that while still have good sized flocks and seem in common are in fact declining at a rapid rate. I hope you enjoy. Black-billed gulls are medium-sized gulls at about 36cm in length and 230g in weight that, like their closely related red bill relatives, are a pale grey overall, having black and white margins to their main flight feathers, a long straight bill and a red iron. Regarding differences when compared to red bill gulls, their bills are more slender and long, with them also having overall paler plumage, as well as more delicate and graceful flies, not to mention apparently being less noisy. Their differences don't prohibit them from interbreeding, however, as analysis from the mitochondrial DNA showed that there has been some genetic exchange between them. Hybrids have been reported of before, and moreover, it's been found from captive animals that they are fertile. Of the three gull species found in New Zealand, the black bill gulls are the only ones that are endemic found nowhere else, and thus are further notable in being unique to New Zealand. What makes them even more unique is that they're quite a rare example of seabirds transitioning from a more coastal existence to one almost entirely inland and in fresh water, being the only island endemic freshwater gulls of their kind. Up to 95% of birds breed in the South Island, mostly living around the region's many braided rivers, lakes, and farmlands. Gulls are also attracted to urban areas, often around freezing works and rubbish dumps, with some birds establishing a colony of about 300 in 2019 in Christchurch's central city in an area left vacant after the earthquakes the region experienced back in 2011. Birds establish their noisy and dense colonies in August through September, with pairs usually laying up to two eggs, though rare cases of four to five have been observed. Up to 10,000 nests with a mean nest density of 1.2 to even 5 per meter squares have been seen mainly down in Southland, where most of their population lives, with birds aiming to make their nests in areas surrounded by water to protect them from predators, as well as in areas with less vegetation and further disturbance. Although still relatively abundant, their numbers across the country have rapidly declined, up to 80% in some areas, and statistical modelling of over 50 years of their counts on 30 rivers have predicted a further decline of over 70% in the next 30. This is down to a wide variety of factors, both the large amount of encroachment from weeds, which has forced a lot of birds to nest closer to the water's edge, making them more vulnerable to flooding and to predators, which use the weeds well for cover, and are responsible for about 80% of all chick deaths. Agricultural intensity and the increased use of herbicides and pesticides didn't help either, and increased droughts and snowfall further reduced nesting opportunities, something which is sure to continue well into the future with climate change. Now among the world's most threatened goals, They've dropped in number from over 200,000 birds to now under 70,000, and they only continue to decline alongside their also endangered red-billed relatives that, while seeming common, are far less plentiful than they used to be. Their plentifulness in certain areas is more so down to heavy concentration rather than any consistently large population. Birds used to frequent the salt marshes of Canterbury back in the early 20th century, before much of them were drained, and, in acknowledging this, Councils recently have sought to restore them where possible to revitalise bird communities, especially near Christchurch, which has one of the highest observed bird diversity rates in terms of number of species seen in the country. And with that, I thank you for watching this instalment of New Zealand's Bird of the Week. For next time, you are now able to vote for the more pork, small, forest dwelling owls that are notable for their calls and bright eyes. With that, I'll see you next time, whenever that may be.